To many Lutherans today, the movement which began in Lutheranism called pietism is a bad word. Pietists saw the people who were growing up in Lutheran churches as having a rote, impersonal religion, one that was in their head but not their heart. However, when pietists had their way, the reforms they brought often led ministers and congregations out of Lutheranism. Pietist influences led to Alexander Mack and the Schwarzenau Brethren, today in denominations like the Church of the Brethren, Brethren Church, and Caris Fellowship. Pietist Lutherans started free churches in America that eventually dropped the Lutheran confessions and became denominations like the Evangelical Free Church and Evangelical Covenant Church. Pietism drew some Lutherans into holding Baptist beliefs, and this led to the formation of the Swedish Baptist General Conference, now known as Converge. All those mentioned are examples of so-called radical pietism, pietism that led to denominational change. But it is possible to be pietist and remain Lutheran, although it may lead to other Lutherans sometimes looking on you with suspicion. One example of a Lutheran denomination that is unashamedly in the pietist tradition is the Church of the Lutheran Brethren of America, or CLBA. They sell on their website a book called Living Lutheran Christianity, a historical sketch of Lutheran pietism, which they describe as a historical apology for Lutheran pietism, and especially that expression of Lutheran pietism practiced by the Church of the Lutheran Brethren. When Lutheran immigrants came to the United States in the 1800s from places like Germany, Norway, and Sweden, they would of course start Lutheran congregations in America. However, because there was no easy transcontinental communication at the time, these congregations would just be independent, not connected to any existing denominational body. Over time, they tended to join together and form denominations, and those tended to merge as well. This bottom-up formation of denominations led to other existing Lutheran denominations like the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod and Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and in 1900, five independent congregations in Milwaukee, Wisconsin formed the Church of the Lutheran Brethren in the same way. Those who founded it were pietistic in their beliefs, leading to some of the distinctive differences between the CLBA and other Lutheran denominations. They say of the Confessions that they are a summary of Bible doctrine and adhere to the Apostles' Creed, Nicene and Athanasian creeds, unaltered Augsburg Confession, and Luther's small catechism. The Church affirms God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is virgin-born, true God and true man, died a substitutionary death, arose bodily, ascended to heaven, and there intercedes, and will return and conduct the judgment. The Church has two sacraments, baptism and holy communion. Commonly, the only form of confession and absolution which is not viewed as a sacrament is personally between two believers. The CLB's statement on baptism is quite interesting as it reflects their pietist influences, which emphasize a person making their faith their own, but at the same time they retain infant baptism in alignment with the Lutheran confessions. Here's what they say. In the sacrament of baptism, God offers the benefits of Christ's redemption to all people and graciously bestows the washing of regeneration and newness of life to all who believe. God calls the baptized person to live in daily repentance, that is, in sorrow for sin, in turning from sin, and in personal faith in the forgiveness of sin obtained by Christ. By grace, we are daily given the power to overcome sinful desires and live a new life in Christ. Those who do not continue to live in God's grace need to be brought again to repentance and faith through the law and gospel. Because the sinfulness of human nature passes on from generation to generation and the promise of God's grace includes little children, we baptize infants who become members of Christ's believing church through baptism. These children need to come to know that they are sinners with a sinful nature that opposes God. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, they need to confess their sinfulness and yield to God and possess for themselves forgiveness of their sin through Jesus Christ. As they are led from the faith received in infant baptism into a clear, conscious, personal faith in Christ as their Lord and Savior, and being assured of salvation relies solely on the finished work of Christ and the power of the gospel to live as children of God. Churches do practice confirmation, with a two-year program being the most common, but confirmation does not automatically make one a communicant member of the church. For this, a person must be received into confessing membership, for which the church gives two requirements. All applicants must confess that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as God's only way of salvation and that they have personally received this salvation based on faith in the atoning work of Jesus Christ through his death on the cross. And number two, all applicants must agree to abide by the Lutheran Brethren's statement of faith and the constitution of their local congregation. 
of communion, the statement of faith says, In the sacrament of Holy Communion, Christ gives to the communicants his body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine. He declares the forgiveness of sin to all believers and strengthens their faith. Lutheran Brethren churches have open communion, where any baptized Christian may participate, and the standard practice is to receive communion in the pews, not to go forward for it. The canon of scripture is 66 books of the Old and New Testaments. It is verbally and plenarily inspired and free from error. On creation, the church teaches that God is the creator, but there is not a lot of specific detail in their official teaching about things like the age of the earth. However, in the Church's Identity magazine, they advertised a training weekend for youth stating that one thing to be taught is how faith systems like evolution, Islam, and New Age thinking don't make sense. They teach that God created Adam and Eve in his image, that they fell into sin, and as a consequence, the entire human race became totally depraved. On salvation, the Church teaches eternal salvation is available to every living human being on earth by God's grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. This salvation consists of an instantaneous aspect and an ongoing continual aspect. We long for people to trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, to come to know Him in a personal way. We are called by the love of Christ to share His gospel. Our mission is as local as our neighborhood and as universal as the whole world. Through the word of the law, God brings sinners to know their lost condition and to repent. Through the word of the gospel, he brings sinners to believe in Jesus Christ, to be justified, to enter the process of sanctification, and to have eternal life. This occurs as the Holy Spirit awakens them to see their sin, convicts them of their guilt of sin, and calls them to repent and believe, inviting and enabling them to accept God's grace in Christ. Each one who thus believes is instantly forgiven and credited with Christ's righteousness. The Word then teaches and guides the believer to lead a godly life. In their book explaining the statement of faith, it is set on the connection between baptism and salvation. Baptism is not another way of salvation. Baptism is the way in which God offers to the sinner the benefit of what Christ has done. As the word of the gospel, baptism is a faith creator. Baptism is the message that Christ Jesus has died to wash away your sins. On the details of salvation theology, they say, We have no spiritual strength, no spiritual resources, nothing to contribute to our salvation. This is the natural human condition. Human beings were created to enjoy fellowship with God. Sin has broken that fellowship. But Pelagius claimed that fellowship wasn't really broken. Semi-Pelagians agree that the fellowship was broken, but say if we reach up, God will be pleased with our effort and reach down. Synergists say that God has stretched his hand down. We simply need to reach up and take his hand. The Bible says that God comes down and takes our hand. The church affirms unlimited atonement, saying that there is no human sin for which Christ has not already borne the punishment. They say that the danger of apostasy is real, and that a person must use the means of grace to stay spiritually strong and alive, and to ignore them is to risk spiritual suicide. Sanctification is a continual work of God in justified persons, and the Holy Spirit works through the means of grace, which the church identifies as namely the word and sacraments. They do not teach entire sanctification or Christian perfection in this life. The church is not charismatic, they do not affirm a post-salvation spirit baptism event, and though they believe that the Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts to all believers, there is no practice of things like words of knowledge or speaking in tongues in worship. On eschatology or end times, the CLBA says, We affirm that scripture teaches that Christ will reign 1,000 years, and that the Church of the Lutheran Brethren's primary tradition is premillennial while allowing for other interpretations. Our premillennial tradition will be taught in our schools and churches. We deny that scripture Scripture sets forth every detail of the nature of Christ's reign with minute precision. On marriage, the CLBA says, Marriage is, number one, a covenant between a man and a woman, number two, witnessed publicly, number three, sexually consummated. Any relationship in which one of these elements is missing would be less than a marriage in a biblical sense. An article by Pastor Eric Sorensen on the CLB website says, The Bible clearly teaches that same-sex activity and gender confusion are results of the fall into sin. Nowhere in Scripture does one's gender differ from their biological sex. The Bible teaches that the only permissible sexual activity is between one male and one female in the context of marriage. The CLBA's position paper on divorce and remarriage states that remarriage is not a right granted by scripture except in the case of a person whose spouse has committed adultery or has deserted, and that marriage of persons who have been divorced shall be limited to those persons whom the pastors and elders since have been led to full repentance and forgiveness relative to the breaking of their first marriage covenant. The CLBA's position paper on abortion says that willful abortion is contrary to the will of God, a heinous crime, and that the practice, promotion, and legal acceptance of it are destructive of the moral consciousness and character. 
On euthanasia, the CLBA's position paper on the subject says in part, Christians must reject any deliberate actions taken for the purpose of causing or hastening death, i.e. euthanasia. This may include direct action, e.g. administering a lethal injection, or withholding of medical treatment or care, e.g. denying life-saving medical treatment to a disabled child that would be provided to a normal child or denying food and water. And also says, Allowing a person to die when a disease process is irreversible and death is obviously imminent in hours or days is not euthanasia. Patients, or when they are not able to speak for themselves, their families, have the freedom to refuse medical treatments which will not cure, improve, or control their disease process. Treatments will impose a burden beyond any benefits. Lutheran Brethren churches tend not to be liturgical. Ministers don't wear special robes or vestments. Congregations often have traditional worship with hymns, but others are contemporary in style or have blended worship styles. The CLB warns about the dangers of alcohol abuse and addiction, but has no policy requiring abstinence from drinking alcohol. On tithing, LeWayne Rajnes, Director of Finance and Personnel for the denomination, writes on the CLB website, Your church needs your tithe. If you're unsure how to tithe, ask your church how you can continue to give, resting in the promises in Malachi that the Lord will pour down a blessing upon you as you give. Church government is congregational and congregations are autonomous. There is synodical administration, but its authority is advisory as it relates to the congregation. There is an elder board or church council, but there is no higher authority. Pastors and elders together constitute the church council, and the congregation commits its spiritual direction to this group of men. Churches own their own property. Placements of pastors takes place by congregations extending a call to a pastor of their choosing. Churches seeking a pastor form a pastoral call committee and can seek assistance from the denomination's president and other officers. The office of pastor or elder is limited to men only. Women are not to teach Christian doctrine to men, and they are not to exercise authority directly over men in the church. There are 104 congregations in the United States, 12 in Canada, and 1,500 more internationally in the countries of Cameroon, Chad, Japan, and Taiwan. They say, today the Church of the Lutheran Brethren is predominantly African, with national church bodies planted in both Cameroon and Chad, and over 275,000 worshiping each Sunday. In the U.S., 28 congregations, or about one quarter of them, are in Minnesota, and 10 congregations are in North Dakota. There are also several congregations each in the New York and Seattle, Washington metro areas. There are none nearby Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where the denomination began. The U.S. headquarters and Lutheran Brethren Seminary are located in Fergus Falls, Minnesota. China Lutheran Seminary in Taiwan is affiliated with the Lutheran Brethren. The Church of the Lutheran Brethren is the eighth largest Lutheran denomination in the United States by number of congregations behind the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, Lutheran Congregations in Mission for Christ, North American Lutheran Church, Association of Free Lutheran Congregations, and Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Click here for a video comparing three of those denominations or for a video on Lutheran outliers, one of which is the CLBA. Click here.